Ni hao. In this video, we will discuss a new data type called the cell array. As we will see, this is useful for storing different types of data, and especially for multiple character arrays. I like to call cell arrays the safety deposit box of arrays. As seen in this picture, there is one wall of many boxes. Each individual box can hold something different from the other boxes. And to access those contents, you need to unlock that specific box. So the entire wall would be called the cell array, and each individual box is a cell. This is the same chart shown in an earlier video. In it, we can see all the data types available in MATLAB. We have discussed logical, character, and numeric data already. Here we are introduced to cells. Remember this key fact about arrays. Any one array can only hold data of one type. However, different cells within a cell array are allowed to hold different data types, thus the safety deposit box analogy. Each individual cell can hold its own types of contents. Here's one example of a cell array defined using MATLAB. There are two rows and two columns of cells. The first cell simply holds a numeric scalar with the value 5. The second cell holds a character array, the word taco. The third cell holds a complex number, 4i. And the last cell holds a 3 by 3 numeric matrix. Each index within this matrix has a specific value. The values are just not shown on this chart. Two methods are shown here for creating the cell array we just looked at. The top example is the most intuitive, so that is the approach I will demonstrate in this course. As we have seen before, with array indexing, we use parentheses to specify an individual index. With cell arrays, we use curly braces to specify an individual cell. Read and type careful. Curly braces and parentheses appear very similar to each other. So to create the first cell, we provide the name of the cell array, A. Then in curly braces, indicate the row and column of the specific cell. Then comes the assignment operator and then the value we want to place in that cell. The same pattern is used for assigning all four of these cells. Once a cell is created, there are a few ways to view its contents. The first is with the cell plot function. This creates the image shown below, which is a nice overview of the general contents. To see more specifics, use the cell display function. This produces the shown output in the command window. This is a little cluttered, but now you can see all the individual contents. Perhaps the most useful approach is to click through MATLAB manually. Here, I have defined the cell array A. I purposely left off cell 1, 2 to demonstrate what an empty cell looks like. Now, when I double click cell array A in the workspace, this appears in the variable editor. Now I can see there are four cells in a two by two pattern. In cell 1, 2, there are empty brackets, which means no contents are in that cell. In cell 2, 2, I can see in the preview that some numbers are in here, but for more details, I double click on that cell. This opens up another tab where I can view the full matrix. A good rule of thumb when in doubt about how your code is working, explore the variables in the workspace. We have just seen how to view cell contents, but sometimes we need to access those contents for computations. On the left side are the commands used to create the same 2 by 2 cell array A, also shown as the matrix contained in cell 2 comma 2. If the goal is to extract the top right number in that matrix, there are three pieces of information that must be provided. First is the name of the overall cell array, then the index of the specific cell using curly braces, then the index within the matrix using parentheses. In our analogy, this is like driving to the correct bank, then opening the correct safety deposit box, and then picking out just one item from that box. The second example shows almost the same thing, but just choosing a different value from the matrix. Remember, curly braces tell you which cell and parentheses tell you which index in a matrix. Cell arrays have many applications. Here we'll discuss just one of the most useful, storing multiple lines of character data. 
Let's say we are storing data for a person named Mr. Potato Head who is a male and has this phone number. If I were to use a character array, then each row of data would need to have the same number of columns. Because of this, I'm forced to fill in the correct number of spaces after each of the shorter entries. This is tedious and difficult. Better is to use a cell array, where each set of text is within its own separate cell. That way, we don't have to worry about making all the character arrays the same length. The way to do this is shown here. Lastly, if we ever have data that is currently stored as a character array or string, we can quickly convert this into a cell array with this command, cell string. This is similar to using num to string to convert from numeric data to string data. In general, MATLAB is built in functions to convert between the major data types.